Hello everyone. Long time no see. I know I've been busy. I feel like I've just come off of a, a year-long marathon, which I actually have, of quilt making and other things that we had going on this year. This is Sonya's from, from Sonya's Creations and it's a lifestyle channel. I make quilts. Uh, I do budgeting and I do, I like to make junk journals. I haven't had a lot of time to do that and like I want to, but hopefully this year, I've set myself on a new format this year where that I'm not taking any custom orders. I'm going to just um, do, I, 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 wanna, I want to liquidate my inventory of fabrics and it's a lot. And I want to liquidate it into quilts. And I want to try to, you know, squeeze money out of stuff that I've already purchased. Some fabrics I've had for four or five years. Some of them I've had for probably six years. And I want to liquidate some of those fabrics. And that's what my plan is this year. And try to buy least amount of stuff as possible as far as fabric and things like that. I did go through, this time of year is when I go through and look to see what I'm low on. And it's staples that I have to have for my business. And one thing was fusible interfacing. And I went on <clears throat> and bought on Amazon and I bought 100, no, about 40 yards. And it was $100. So it came in, I believe, yesterday. So I've got that on the shelf. And then uh, I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of yards of fabrics. And I'm trying this. And I do love to buy fabrics. Don't get me wrong. I really like to buy fabrics. It's one of my favorite pastimes. But I'm going to try my best to liquidate what I've already purchased. So I would like to have as many no-spend days on anything this year as I possibly can. And a no-spend day means that you can go through your calendar and it does not include paying your bills it does not include groceries or gas money or anything like that it includes any extra spending uh, like your spending money that you set aside for yourself uh, for the pay for the pay period um, and just not spend any money I mean don't stop at the store and get any you know don't stop at McDonald's and get a tea don't stop at the store and get a drink or a snack take all that with you before you leave and you can have anything you want if you include it in your buy it when you go to the grocery store. So I'd like to click click off as many of these no spend days as possible. Now, uh, this is January. Uh, well, tomorrow will be January, so it's time to set up our budget for the year. And I've already set up the pay period. That the payday will be January. Uh, The ninth. We won't actually get it until the tenth. My husband and I are going on us going on a recharge trip. We've been through a lot this last year. He lost his father. We had a lot of work to do at his daddy's house to get it cleaned out and to get it sold. But we did get everything sold and everything situated on his property. And my husband had the COVID um, back in July. Uh, we had. My daughter's actually got it right now. She's doing fine. I asked her a few days ago how she felt. She said, I feel like I've got a really bad cold. That's what I feel like. So she's on day, let's see. She's on day six. So she's on the uphill climb now and feeling and be back to work. Probably about next Wednesday, she'll be back to work. And uh, But she's 22 and I don't let her lay around. That's the one thing I advise on COVID. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a mother and a wife. And don't let your COVID patients lay around too much. They need to get up, walk around, you know, circulate the blood and clear the lungs and walk around. Drink plenty of fluids. Now, in my daughter's case, she doesn't, she can't taste anything and she can't smell anything, but it has not affected her appetite at all. She is eating like a horse. So, um, anyway, she's she's doing well. She's getting a little bored. And she's probably wishing she could go somewhere tonight for New Year's Eve. But it's just me and Mom. It's just her and Mama tonight. Okay. So, I have set up a low income because I'm not, I've not started back my sewing. I've been sewing a little bit. Been kind of piddling around. Not really doing a whole lot. But uh, I won't start my serious sewing until January the 11th when we get back from our trip and so I put down a, a rather a low income 
uh, for us for uh, that pay period on the 9th. I've already made a truck payment. Uh, I've made a truck payment last Monday uh, for the G December 25th payday. And I'm, I think this year I'm going to put as much as I can toward my truck payment. But I am, I'm going to make a payment both pay periods. That's what I'm going to start out doing, and I'm going to see how that, how effective that is. I know that every time your balance goes down, your principal goes down, then your interest goes down also. And I've actually printed off some printables that I'm going to share with you. Um, if I can find, oh, here's what I'm looking for. This is a car loan. Of course, I have a truck. And the starting balance was 3770234. There's 100 of these squares on this uh, chart. I can't see that. There we go. There's 100 squares on this chart. And I started out and I, I counted, um, I, div I divided 100 into my. Uh, starting balance I can't think my starting balance and I came up with three hundred and seventy eight dollars each one of these squares represents three hundred and seventy eight dollars in the principal that has been paid off so I'm feeling very well about, very good about that since it's, I've only had the truck for October November December almost four months so this is one quarter of the way to having it paid off this little this little uh, flag here and then has a place to put your, um, um, how I guess how much you owe at this point. And then there's halfway, there's 75% uh, of the way, and then finish line. And I'd like to have this at least, I'd like to have it halfway covered by the end of the year. Uh, you know, I want to have it paid off in a year, but if I can get halfway in a year, that would be absolutely fantastic. But this is one thing, this chart, came from debtfreecharts.com and I will leave that in the um, description box so you can find it easily but it's debt free charts and they have a lot of different kind of charts you just go through there some of them are free some of them are like a dollar and a half they're not very expensive and you uh, pick out the ones you want there's they, there's everything there everything saving up for a down payment on a house there is just a ton of printables and that's where I got this, debtfreecharts.com. Okay, that's one. And then um, we're going to talk about these savings, and then we're going to talk about some saving challenges. This is for, um, I said earlier that it is the desire of our heart to have a pontoon. We do go fishing a lot, and we would like to have a pontoon that we can fish off of. And then we like to have, you know, where the, the grandkids want to go with us and they can um, jump off of it and swim or, you know, whatever. Spend the day on it, whatever we want to do. And this chart has been set up for $10,000. I left a zero off of there. And it starts out at $200. $200 um, actually only catches the bottom of this zero. That's why I didn't color it in. So we're right here on the savings for the boat. We have $200 in that envelope to save for a boat. So every time we are, we, every time we advance by $200, it will get another line. And as, as you save, you color in the white part, I call voided part, the voided part of this chart, and you just color in a line. And visually, it's rewarding because you can see as it goes up. That's why they do those charts, you know, when they're raising money for a charity or whatever, do that thermometer chart. It's when you visually see it, it helps to motivate. So, uh, anyway, this is for our boat. We have $200 right now, so we got the tip end of our, B, uh, our zero colored in. And this is also from DebtFreeCharts.com. Then we have a home improvement fund. Now, we, like I have told you in a previous video... When my husband's father passed away, we did get a little bit of money, and we are investing uh, some of that early this year in my home, belonged to my grandmother, 
She built it in 1963. The highway came through, four lane the highway in the early to mid 60s and they purchased the house that she had actually down on the road and they gave her six thousand dollars so she took that six thousand dollars and only spent six thousand dollars to build a house that i live in now and she had a lot of brothers and brothers friends that came in and and did whatever their trade was whether it be masonry or cabinets or whatever and so it's a very well built home but the windows i guess were okay for 1963 but they're not okay now so we have uh, ordered all new windows and we are going to get new vinyl siding and a new front porch because i love to i love a front porch and our front porch now she built a front porch that is four foot wide and it doesn't and it has a roof on it but doesn't matter what time of the year it is or what time of the day it is you can't sit on the front porch without the sun beating down on you and i'm not a sun worshiper so i'm not thrilled about the sun shining on me so we're going to extend that they're going to demolish that concrete porch and we're going to make extend the porch out 10 feet it's already 20 feet long it's going to be 20 foot long by 10 feet out and then we're going to get a new uh, it's going to have a roof over. It's not going to be a deck. It's going to be a porch and we're going to put a steel roof on our house So we're putting we're investing some money in our home But after those things are paid for that money has been set aside for that once that is done And I'd start doing the inside of the house then I'm going to need some I'm going to I want to save up the money to do the inside of the house and I hope all of that is clear to you uh, and I've got a two thousand uh, dollar a goal for that in $40 increments and right now I have zero money in that but that is something we're gonna be saving for and then road trips back before Christmas we got up a spur-of-the-moment trip to the mountains for two nights and it was me with my husband and me my sister her husband her two daughters one of her daughter's husbands and each one of her daughters has got a daughter so we all went to the mountains and for two nights and that was a lot of fun and so I thought that I would like to save up a, this time to save up for it instead of it kind of being a spur of the moment thing save up for it and I've got a ceiling of three thousand dollars and it might not cost that much to go but I just wanted to have a three thousand dollar for a road trip might be able to do two road, road trips for that two weekend trips and I'm saving that in sixty dollar increments so by the I figured it up and by um, about June we should have around 2120 and then by September should have 3000 and you know any extra money that I can throw with this to beef it up a little bit beef it up a little faster I might do that we'll have to wait and see but this one is from debt-free charts also then we have the Christmas and I kind of got a little bit behind on my Christmas for 2021 Christmas 2021 this is a debtfreecharts.com chart also and I'm saving Christmas in $40 increments and I have already got $200 in Christmas so far now I opened up a Christmas club at our credit union on October the 30th and with $120 I had saved up $40 per payday in October times three paydays $120 opened it up not knowing that the Christmas Club pays out on October 31st so the $120 I put in there on October uh, 30th automatically got transferred back to savings on the 31st so I actually only started out with $80 but in my envelopes I've got another $140 so that gives me uh, I've actually got 220 saved up but I won't color in again until I get to 240 in the $40 increments and this is where we are at Christmas for this year again and this is a savings of $2,000 <clears> I saved about a thousand and five or ten dollars this time and two thousand is way too much but one thing I did learn we have 10 grandchildren by next Christmas we will have 11 we have five children and three three of those have either a girlfriend or a wife or a husband and so it's a lot of us and I like to buy everybody something I like to buy everybody something useful something they will enjoy and so uh, the thousand dollars was not hard enough for us and so I'd like to beef it up to two will not spend two but it will be there available and anything that's left over 
uh, would go into um, savings or to paying off, going toward paying off my truck or whatever. But this is the Christmas one and it's from DebtFreeCharts.com. Then, um, the, um, I'm going to do a couple of savings challenges this year. And this is one that I'm going to do. And I printed this off. I don't remember what the name of the website was for this. But all I did was Google money saving challenges. And this is where you save $1,000 in one year with this chart. And as you can see, there's different amounts of money on here. Uh, I think I looked at it. Let me go through it again. I think the largest amount on there is $51. And the way you do this is um, this is a 52 week challenge. There's 52 of these. Um, no, I think there's 51. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 49, 50, 51. Oh, there's 52. <coughs> Excuse me. And I would go through, you just go through and just pick out the numbers that you want to save for that pay period. Since there's 52, we do hours every two weeks. I would pick out two of these numbers to save for the first payday. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to decide because I've already written out my budget for this next pay period. And after I took the 2200 and deducted my truck payment, I had 1624 left. And after my cash envelopes, which are groceries, spending money, and gas, uh, my husband is a paramedic. He takes $50 per week to work. He leaves on Tuesday. He doesn't come home until Friday, so he's gone day and night um, from Tuesday to Friday. And he takes $50 per week. They, Him and his partner, they buy groceries, and they cook. They have a crock pot. They have a, a griddle. They have different electric skillet, different thing. And they like to cook when they can, especially breakfast. And he takes $50 per week. And now he does take a lot of leftovers from home also. But he takes $50 <coughs> a week to work with him, and that is working very, very well. I get $60 of spending money. That's $30 per week. And on our gas, we put aside $150, and that's for both of us. And I do work at home, so I save a lot of money on gas. And groceries was $400 last week. I'm knocking that down to $350, at least for a little while, to see how that works out. And I am going to be vigilant this year. And that's another reason I wanted to drop my business down to not taking orders. It's too stressful. I don't have time to even think clearly most of the time. So, you know, when you make 400 quilts a year, you you know, it's, it's very, very stressful. Especially when you got 30 people at the, on the same day saying, is my quilt finished? And you can only do one at a time. So this year I'm going to be vigilant about meal planning and buying my groceries one time every two weeks and that and also I've been working on making myself a master a master grocery list I'm not I've just gotten it started and I, this is just basically staples that you need uh, I haven't even put in laundry down here I do make my own laundry detergent uh, for Christmas, my sister is a big couponer, and we all got a box from her. It had laundry detergent, it had fabric softener, it had shampoo, body wash, dish detergent. It was just all kinds of cleaning products like that. So I want to make out a master list, and so that I can go through the house before I go buy groceries and see, you know, do I need shampoo? And if I do put it on my list, do I need soap? This is just kind of a reminder of the things that we keep in the house all the time. I haven't even put down the dog food and that sort of thing. And um, I, I just started working on this, and it'll take me a while to get this done. Uh, I pretty much buy all the, the same groceries all the time. Uh, there will be no meat on here uh, because we go to the meat market about every three months and spend about $250 and that is enough meat for us for about three months and it's very very good we get steaks and we get ground beef we get sausage and bacon and roast and and uh, pork chops we get you know just and it's in huge bulk so I have to bring it home I need to put Ziploc bags under my paper products too because I break that down into smaller um, meals because I don't need 10 pounds of pork chops frozen all together. So I need to, I'm going to get this master grocery list finished so that I can do it's just a checklist to kind of see what I need. 
and what I need to um, put on my actual grocery list and I probably will put this on my refrigerator and so that I'll have a, a guide to go by and but I, I'm just kind of trying to put the staples on here and if I have a new recipe I want to try then I would just put those ingredients on my actual grocery list and also if you have any good crock pot meals I love to do crock pot, crock pot meals because I can put it on in the morning go about my business and when we're hungry about six o'clock uh, it's the house is smelling good and it's ready to eat so if you have any good crock pot meals that you enjoy let me know and uh, especially if it's any meals it does not require a special ingredient if it's you know basically you're not using you're using your staples that you have in your pantry that's the kind of thing I like to do and I like to keep a well stocked pantry because that way when I get ready to cook something I just go in the pantry and I pull out my cream of mushroom I pull out a couple of onions I pull out you know all the things I need to make a meal and it it's just frustrating to have to run to the store to pick up one or two items that you need. So I like to keep away. And I do like to buy generic. I don't have to buy name brand. I had a friend one time several years ago, and she was the most horrific person with money I'd ever known in my life. She's been, she's been gone for six years. She took her life in August of 2014. But even looking back, she was the most, she was terrible with money, so irresponsible. And she told me one time, open up her cabinets, it was all name brand groceries. Now I was the one that she would come to to borrow money to last till payday. But she, I asked her one time, I said, your cabinets look like a store shelf. And I said, do you not ever buy generics? She said, I don't like generics. I don't like generic groceries. I said, really? She said, no, I like name brand. I'm like, okay. So one day she came, they came, they, we were forever eating at each other's house, houses. And they came over to eat one night, and I think we had spaghetti. Everything either came from Aldi's, everything was off brand. Uh, and I cooked spaghetti. And she said, man, that was so good. And I wasn't doing it to trick her. But when she said, that is so good, I thought to myself, Okay, now it's time to it's t time to tell her. I said everything you just ate was off brand. It was generic. It was off brand. She said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Well, it was so good, but you know that did not influence her still to buy off brands." Now, when I go and I see a new a product that I've never bought before and it's an off brand, I buy one container, one can, one bottle, one whatever it comes in. I try it out. And the next time I go to that store, I know that's good, I like it, and I'll buy, a, you know, maybe I'll buy several of them then and put them in my pantry. But, you know, try it and see, because they, I saw on YouTube, you might can find that on a YouTube channel, comparing all these brands with store brand, with, with name brands, and it was amazing. They had two people blindfolded, and they would say, okay, this is, I'm not going to tell you which one, but this is Oreos, and this one of them is Oreos, one of them is the Aldi brand. And they couldn't tell the difference. And like potato chips, they couldn't tell the difference which one was the off-brand, which one was the generic brand. So that's just a little bit of a history of, and I was raised very humbly. My daddy was a Baptist preacher. He had four children, and my mother, she had to work, and so my sisters and I had to swap clothes. We had to my daddy had a <clears throat> a name for dish detergent. <clears throat> he called dish detergent dish poo because sometimes you wash dishes with it, sometimes you wash your hair with it. And you think, oh, wash your hair with dish detergent? Well, it's all soap. And the main thing was our hair was clean and it smelled lemony fresh. And, you know, you just, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And we, um, we, had, we lived on hand-me-downs. I remember after church on Sunday night, one of the ladies would give my mother money. And I asked her one time, Mama, why does Miss Pat give you money on Sunday night? And she said, it's for your lunches next week. So Miss Pat was giving my mother lunch, our lunch money for the next week. And then Mama would give us, you know, however how much we needed per day. And we would go to school and buy our lunch. But Miss Pat paid for our lunches uh, every week 
uh, in school. And Miss Pat was a home economics teacher. And one year, I remember, she made us all a homemade coat. And she, but she was a professional now. She was a professional seamstress. And it was absolutely beautiful. And I felt like a million dollars wearing that coat. So, you know, I've come from very, very... My grandmother was a was a character. She was widowed in 1955. My father's, my grandfather committed suicide in 1955. And uh, he, um, she finished raising her kids. And when she died in 2006, she did not owe a penny on her car, her house. She did not ever have a credit card in her entire life. And she had, um, she got her uh, checks came in the mail, and I think her I think her income was a little over five hundred dollars a month. But when she died, she had money in the bank. She had enough money in savings to pay for her, her own funeral, which was very important for her. And everything she had was paid off. There was no lien supplied to anything she had. So that's the way you know it should be. That's the way it's supposed to be. Anyway, I digress. Making up my master uh, plan. I may type this out on my computer when I get done, but. I'd rather have it at least a rough draft before I ever uh, print that out. <clears throat> Where it's more for I can read my own writing, but I know that looks like scribble to anybody else. Anyway, that's my ma that's my start of my master plan for my grocery list for this year. So when I go buy groceries, I don't go because my husband will say, "For heaven's sakes, please don't buy any more cans of tomato sauce." And I said, "Why?" He said, "You've got like 14 cans of tomato sauce in the pantry." Don't buy any more tomato sauce. So that's what that list is for. To keep a check on what I have and what I need. All right. When we get down and get, take the sinking the the envelope cash envelopes out, and I don't have those. I don't believe I have those. Yes, I do. I have a wallet like this, and it's a no name brand wallet. I have never found the name on it anywhere. I don't think. Um. There's no name on my wallet, but it's just a, uh, it's called a cash envelope wallet and the strap has broke off of it, but this is where I keep the monies that I spend, you know, daily or I need it with me when I go out. So if I decide to go, time to go buy groceries, I have it with me. The gas money, I keep it with me. My husband will say, I need some, I need some diesel for my truck. And I'll say, go and look in the, my wallet and get some gas money out and then my spending money. This is my personal spending money envelope. And it is empty. Because I have put it into my phone case somewhere. And there's no money in there either. So I'm broke. I'm flat broke. It probably spilled into my purse. But anyway, and I've got I've got a couple of dollars in here, but for the most part I'm broke until next payday. But that is what I carry around with me all the time. And those are our cash. Um, I leave my husband's, um, I'll show you what I do with his spending money so he has easy access to that. Now, the sinking funds for this year, I've added some. I have, you know, it, and we've been doing this for almost a year. Next payday will be a year that we started doing this. We started on January the 7th of last year made a huge difference in our life. It made such a difference in our life that people started noticing. And the most important people that noticed it were our children. That means a whole lot that our children started noticing a, the, the, the huge difference in our lives. That they said, we want to get in on what you're doing. So um, my daughter-in-law has got the printable version. This is the Budget Mom printable version. I actually bought these tabs separate and added those so I could easily find the months. And some of them are crooked. Like July is on there crooked. And August is on there crooked. But it doesn't matter. But this is the printable version of the Budget Mom. I bought the printable version because I think her shipping is kind of slow and you know, she has to wait for new uh, shipments of them to come in. So I printed my own version and I also bought the hole punch that I forget what the hole punch is called, but it cuts out the T's. That may be called a T hole punch. I don't know. And then you buy the disc and all these go on here. You can take out one sheet and you can um, 
edit back. And in case you haven't noticed, this video is not really about my January the 9th budget. This is basically getting everything set up to start my budget, start, you know, living frugally and on a budget for January the 9th. So we're a week away from that. But it's New Year's Eve and I wanted to get everything set up and know where I'm going. Now, I told you about well, my sinking funds for this year. I've gotten rid of the cigar box. I haven't gotten rid of it. I've retired it and I use it for something else. But I bought this. This is from the Paper Studio. at It's, it's um, Agenda 51, which is made by Paper Studio. I got this at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. Um, and they are 50% off pretty off, pretty often, at least every three weeks. Paper Studio goes on sale, and I think I paid about $7.50 for this rose gold. And this is taking the place of our cigar box. And I'm not finished with these. I got these envelopes. This this was empty. This little, little book was empty. And I bought these off of Amazon, and I will try to put that link in the description box for these clear zipper envelopes. And what I did was I took each one of our sinking funds, which is medical, house insurance, car maintenance, our boat, uh, house miscellaneous, and that's for whenever the faucet starts leaking and you have to get that fixed. That's what that is for. Um, and then Christmas 2021, I've got to put that into our Christmas club. Birthday money, we give each one of the grandchildren $20 for their birthday because there's so many of them now. And then we have our refrigerator account. I need a, I'm need. i going to need a refrigerator here pretty soon. Mine is acting up, and I just hope every day it lasts another day. And um, But we have a refrigerator envelope, and I've got two more, and I'm going to make one of them the money savings challenge a place to put the money savings challenge and I'm going to use the other one for another challenge that I'm going to tell you about in just a moment but this is where and then also my husband's envelope is tucked over here in the side pouch and that is his spending money for work but this is from paper studio agenda 52 and it's a very shiny and it is taking the place of my old cigar box Okay, now, I said I was going to pick, um, oh, let me go over this first, and then I'm going to pick my numbers for my 52-week challenge. Uh, medical, we set aside $10 for medical, and that's co-pays, drugstore, that sort of thing. House insurance, we're still setting aside 55, uh, $35. That will be due in April, and I think I've got right at $200 already saved up for that, and I need about $360. So, $35 every payday, and that should be plenty. Come April, I should have the money to pay the house insurance. I'll have to beef that up after I pay it in April, because whenever, after the April is paid, it'll be due again in October at the same time our property tax is due, and I will beef that up to cover both the house insurance and the property tax. We pay that every we pay the house insurance every six months. The car maintenance, I was saving a hundred dollars on that. I've got about three hundred a little over three hundred dollars saved up. We are driving two fairly new vehicles. And so basically what I'm setting aside for is uh oil changes and our tags. We are W's uh Wallace's, so our car tags are due in October and I like to have enough in this to go and pay cash for our car tags. We also have a camper, and we also have a trailer, and all those things will have to have a tag on it. So that's one, two, that's four things will have to have a tag. So uh, I might beef that up a little bit into the summer just to make sure that I've got enough to pay for all those tags. Uh, the trailer tag is about sixteen fifty, I think, not very much at all, but these trucks are... And the camper, camper's not too bad. It's like 140, but the trucks um, are the biggest expense in that. Christmas, I've beefed that up to 100, uh, and I'm going to keep that at 100 for a little while. Uh, once my Christmas tree starts getting filled in quite a bit, I may back down on that. 
um, a little bit and put that money towards something else. But Christmas right now is at $100. Gifts is at 20 and that's for the grandkids' birthdays. Refrigerator Fund is getting $100 every payday. The Home Improvement, I've, I, as my chart indicates, what did I do with that? Uh, it's $40 every payday. And Road Trip, as I've already said on my chart, is at $60 every payday and that is a total of six hundred and sixty five dollars into the sinking funds if you don't know what sinking funds are sinking funds is putting aside a little at a time for a bigger goal you know ten dollars in medical is nothing but you save ten dollars every payday you know you, then you have it's not long do you have 40 and then 50 and then 60 and you go and get some prescriptions filled and they're 30 dollars and you've got the money to pay for them then you continue to put the 10 dollars in there and you're you may need to put more than 10 dollars aside for medical but 10 dollars is good for us my husband went and picked up four prescriptions the other day and it was 26 dollars so 10 dollars is, is good for us and then um then like um Everybody's sinking funds is a personal thing. Your sinking funds would not look anything like this. You would need to set up and say, well, I'd like to go big on my son's birthday, and it's in June. Well, uh, I personally don't buy anything for my kids for their birthdays. Uh, I just send them a happy birthday. They're grown. They have more money than I do, and they are doing very well. And if they want something, they go out and buy it. Uh, my son... My youngest son lives the closest, um, and I usually fix him a uh, meal, and him and his family come over and eat. And he has to have my family has to have a strawberry cake. He, he likes the strawberry cake so much that he asked me one day how to make it. So him and his wife make it for every um, dinner they go to, and they make them all the time. I said, "Now you're gonna get tired of the strawberry cake, and I'll have to fix something else." But uh, your gifts. You know, instead of twenty dollars a payday, and once I get to two hundred and twenty dollars on that, I'll probably stop funding that, because with eleven grandchildren, uh, we have ten right now. We have another one on the way. Uh, that's only two hundred and twenty dollars, and I would stop funding that once it got fully funded, and put that twenty dollars towards something else, toward my refrigerator, toward my home improvement, toward my um, car maintenance. You know, whatever you can, you can. You don't have to fund all of these at one time, or you can fund all of them a little at a time every payday. It depends on what you want to do. Um, if you don't want to start saving for Christmas until June, that's fine. You just set this up like you want to. But I do recommend that you, start, that you think of all the things you'd like to save up for now. Write them in. This is the Budget Mom layout. But you can do this on a piece of notebook paper. Um, but go ahead and set up Christmas now. You could put zero beside it, but it reminds you, you know, Christmas is getting closer and closer and I've got, I'm not saving anything. So I need to start saving for it, you know, now. And so this is my setup for sinking funds. When I got through with my sinking funds, I had $299 left over from this original 2200 after the truck, after my cash envelopes, and after my sinking funds, I had $299 left over. This is actually a sinking fund right here, but I ran out of space. So I put it down here. That's the meat market. And I'm putting $50 toward the meat market. And when I get about $250, and I might not, I may decide to go when I've got $200. Just depends on how much meat is in the refrigerator, how long I think that will last, and how much I think I'm going to need to buy when I get there. And the, with $249 left over, and I hope you can see this, I'm going to pick for my set money savings challenge. If you save these dollar amounts, just if you get paid every week, you would save, you'd pick one. If you get paid uh, twice a month, like we do, every payday, you would pick two of them. And I think I'm going, I, I kind of was thinking about it, and I thought, well, I'll pick a high one and a low one. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do, and this may work out well, if I do a 6 and a 20, get one at the top and one at the very bottom, that'd be 26. And then the next time I get a 9 and a 7. 
but then the next time is a, it's a 19 and a 33. So 28 and 51, that's a, that's probably one, one of the biggest ones you would have. That would be $79. And, um, you can challenge yourself to spend, uh, let, uh, save $28 out of your grocery. Uh, if you want to do it that way, you can save, um, out of your spending money and you know we do an update uh, right before payday and we empty our cash envelopes to see how much we've actually got left over you can make that a, a separate challenge to where everything you have left over you pull all that out start out with clean envelopes when you stuff them again and I'll be doing videos on how to stuff your envelopes but you can Take what if you had five dollars left in groceries, five dollars left in gas, and a dollar left in your spending envelope. That's eleven dollars. Take that eleven dollars out, put it in a jar. Do that every payday. Don't touch the jar, and you'll be shocked at how much you would um, save on um, in a year's time and add it to that jar. The next month, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark off the six dollar one. And the $20 one and I'm going to put down $26 in extra savings from our 52 week challenge and that is what I'll be saving in that and then the next thing I'm going to do this year is called the 100 envelope challenge you take 100 envelopes envelopes whatever however how you say it and you number them one to a hundred and I've already done that you probably can't read it because my handwriting is like a doctor's but I've got them listed and they're in order one to a hundred what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them in half I'm going to shuffle them like a deck of cards and that was not a very good job and then I'm going to Oh, that one's a mess right there. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to shuffle them again. And then I'm going to show you how this challenge is done. What I'm trying to do is get that $100 down in there somewhere. I don't, I'm not avoiding it, I just, I want it to sneak up on me, I guess. All right. Let me do that one more time on the ends here. Maybe it'll be easier to, I don't know if my hands are big enough to do it this way. Just kind of shuffle them up. You can put them in a bag and shake them up. Ever how you want to do it. Just kind of make it random and make it fun. Make saving money fun. By the way, I haven't introduced my uh, a story I was telling a while ago, but I kind of get sidetracked sometimes. Well, let me finish this. What you do is for every payday, if you get paid once a week, if you get paid one time, if you get paid every week, you would pick two of these. So you can go in here and pick this one without looking and pick uh, that's two. Pick that one. And you would be saving $22.77 which is $99. <clears throat> now you can have the 77 and the 22 Put your $99 in the back envelope. Whichever way you want to do it. You can put 77 in one and 22 in the other. Whatever you want to do. Put a rubber band around it and put it into the box. I happen to have a crap load of the shoe, the plastic shoe boxes that you get at Walmart. I use those for um, separating my applique fabrics, and I'm going to I'm going to use one of those to put this in. And but we get paid every two weeks, so since we get paid every two weeks, I'm going to need four of these. So I'm going to pick this one. Oh, that was a big one, big one. And I pick this one, three dollars. That's a good one. And I'm going to put a rubber band back around these that I'm not using. So the next payday, I would need to save. This is 
These two were 99 and 92 is 100 and 191, $194 that I will put probably in the back envelope. And that would be, and I, and I can write on there total, you know, what did I say? $194. So I'm going to write that down here. Um, 100 envelope challenge is $194. Now, get out my little handy dandy calculator if I can find it with ease. May not be able to find it easily. Maybe I can just do it in my head. We had $249 left over, and we take out, uh, that is $220. We have $29 left over that I'm going to leave in the checking account as a buffer. So I've picked out my numbers for my 52-week challenge and my 100 envelopes. Now, at the end of the 100 envelope challenge, you would have $5,000 in your envelopes. At the end of your 52-week savings, this, you will have $1,000 to put it toward a debt. But this is, I mean, you may, you may think, oh, this is silly, this is crazy. It's just fun. That's all it is. It's just fun. It's just a fun way for, you know, to, and you don't have to have any fun with your savings if you don't want to. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing, you know, doing fun things with my savings. But what I was talking about, about my children started taking notice. Um, my daughter-in-law and son, she is a nurse. She's an RN. She is a regional manager for some, uh, for some dialysis clinics. She's the main, she's the main boss below the big boss. And so she makes very good money. Then, um, I told him one time that her and my son makes as much money as all the rest of us put together. My son is a project man, a project engineer at the job he works. They give him a project, you know, a new line. He makes window sills for high-end cars. That's what the factory does he works at. And, you know, they say, okay, um, Mercedes has got a new window sill they want us to do and we need you to design the machine and get the line set up and all of that. So he makes very good money. And but she was moping around before Christmas and my son was like, I gotta go, mama. I gotta see what's wrong and see why she's, you know, looking so sad. So he went and he called he said the reason she was looking so sad was because she didn't think we had any money for Christmas. Excuse me. But first, and I was like, first of all, I was thinking, that's insanity. As much money as y'all make, you know, and you've got three boys. One of them is in school to be a commercial diver, and the other two are 10 years old and 8 years old. Why do you not have enough money for Christmas? So, during the Thanksgiving meal, after our Thanksgiving meal, which is always on Saturday after Thanksgiving, because my husband has to work Thursdays. It doesn't matter what falls on that thir on Thursdays, he has to work. He works a government contract down in Tuscaloosa, works at a veterans hospital, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, don't matter whose birthday it is, it doesn't matter what's going on, he works on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we always have our Christmas and our um, Thanksgiving on Saturday. So I knew that she had she was worried about it, so I said, okay, Let's, let's sit down. Let me show you something. I want, I want to show you what I do. I want to show you a secret. that It's not a big secret, but it's a secret because you don't know about it. And I showed her, and we didn't do real numbers because it's none of my business what my son and his wife make. I just know they make a lot. But the exact numbers are none of my business. And um, I'm not one of these helicopter mother to grown children. If they need me and they know where to get a hold of me, if I need them, they know how to get a hold of me, but I don't stick my nose in their everyday lives. So we just sat down with, you know, started off with like a $2,000 income, which I knew was ridiculous. But then we went down into mortgage and all of these things. And you know when somebody is interested, when they start asking you questions. When I went through the whole thing with her, she was like, okay, I don't understand the difference between cash envelopes and sinking funds. 
So I explained to her, cash envelopes is what we set aside to spend on the necessities for that pay period. Thankfully, her and my son both get paid the same day of the pay period. They get paid the same day. So they was able to pull their monies and put them on the same pay period and go through, listed all their debts, what was due in that two-week pay period, put aside so much for groceries, so much for spending, so much for his spending, so much for their gas and miscellaneous, whatever they, however how they want to set their cash spending up. Then she went through and listed all the things that she wanted to save up for. You know, and I don't know what her, I don't know what hers looks like. I've not seen it. Uh, she has one of these also, uh, the printable version of the Budget Mom. Uh, pay this is a paycheck to paycheck workbook. And she you know, lists her sinking funds. And when she got down and, and took everything out that she needed to take out for that two weeks, when she got down to what was left over, she had $2,600. And that was just one payday. And, of course, she just lightened up and was like, Whew, I do have money for Christmas. If you put it pen to paper, you do get a more peaceful recognition of what's going on. Now, if you get down here and you got a minus sign, then you got to go up here and rearrange something. You got to drop some sinking funds. You got to lower your cash envelopes, whatever you got to do. You need to end up with a zero budget. Now, I ended up with a $29 left over for January, the first payday of January, but I'm going to leave that in my account uh, so that if I want to buy a movie off of Amazon or whatever, it would come out of that. Um, I just like, just, you need to leave a little bit in your checking account just for those unexpected. Um, deductions from your account if you get too many deductions from your account that you're not expecting you need to investigate and figure out why and who's doing it and make them stop but this is how we do it we don't have a mortgage we don't have uh we only have one child left at home and she's 22 she has her own car her own car payment she has pays her own insurance her own cell phone uh but she is living at home. Now, during this conversation I had with my daughter-in-law, another female family member was there. And I'm not going to call any names. I'm not going to tell you how I'm related to her. But she was in the same room. And I was talking over this with my daughter-in-law. And she was interested. And she asked a bunch of questions about, you know, how they, and since she has started doing it, if she has any questions, she calls me. And because she didn't understand what this meant by income budget and then actual. Well, the answer to that is when you have your budget and your actuals, your budget is what you expect. And I usually put on the low side about what I expect. But they actually, whenever you get paid, if it's more, then you write at the actual income. And then if you have down your power bill and your phone bill and your uh, different things like that that can vary month to month you put down what you think it could possibly be give a you know good estimate and then when the bill actually comes you write down the actual amount it may be a little less it may be a little more and that's what the budget is in the actual is get your guess in here and this is what the actual bill was here so that's what that means and she's oh, okay i understand that and so when she has a question, she calls me and asks me. But this other young female, uh, young to me, but young female in the room was sitting over there and didn't even perk her ears. It, her ears did not even perk up when we were talking about this and asking questions. Now, the TV was not on, so she could hear everything we were saying. My home is small, so it's not like she was too far away. She was in the same room, and so she just was not interested so and she actually needs it more than anybody that I know but she wasn't interested and if you're not if they're not interested they're not going to do it absolutely not going to do it and i thought that maybe my daughter-in-law after she saw what she got had left over at christmas and got through christmas she would be like okay i'm done with that you know blah 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 but she's not it was payday again this week and she wrote out her budget this week and they actually don't have to guess. They're both on salary, so they know to the penny what they're going to get uh, every two weeks. So that's that's handy. My husband is hourly, 
And so that varies. That Our income can vary a lot one way or the other. And so, and also I have my quilt shop and I work it like a regular job. I haven't got started good. I haven't got started yet after the holidays and I won't until January the 11th. And then I will start my, um, start back out here every day working like I work, like you work a job, work seven or eight hours a day. And I still have meals to cook and laundry to do and floors to sweep and puppies to let in and out and all that sort of thing. So about, about seven or eight hours a day is enough for me. And so, but if they're interested, they'll ask a lot of questions. And if you lead by example, your children and your grandchildren will be like, how are you doing that? How are you? And, and they'll, they'll start asking questions. And when you show them, if they ask you questions to clarify what you're talking about, they're interested. So this video was not about um, my actual budget. It was how I wanted to set up for what I wanted to save for this year and to encourage anybody to do this, no matter how much money you have or how many bills you have, encourage everyone to give, be intentional with your money, to set it up, tell it where to go, tell, you what, tell it where you want it to be, and then after payday and you get your cash envelope stuffed and then you're done your money troubles are over for until the next payday and you just have to sit down to say okay money you're going here and you're going here and you're going here now the way I like to set mine up is the last payday of the month I pay all of next month's bills and I did this last this in, de in December, where I actually paid the truck payment, the internet, the life insurance, the car insurance, the um, all of our monthly bills, the light bill, the phone bill, the water bill, all of those bills, and I pay those out of one paycheck. And then the next payday, the last pay, the the first payday of the month, I pay an extra truck payment because my husband's truck is paid for and I would like to have mine paid for. Don't like to owe, I hate making a car payment worse than anything. I don't mind making a house payment. Don't like to make any kind of payments, but a vehicle payment is the worst one because I know every time I mail, every time I mail that in or send it in, um, my vehicle's worth less and less and less every time I make a payment on it. That's what bothers me. So I'm, I'm really want to get this paid off. My goals for this year are the 100 envelope challenge, the 52 week challenge, um, the 52 week challenge, and then all these little uh, pay. This is a car payoff. Like I said, this came from debt. Uh, this came from debtfreecharts.com. All of these, I got all of these. I think I paid seven dollars and fifty cents, and I can print them off as many times as I want. Matter of fact, they all printed off twice. Some of them printed off. Let's see if I've got one here. No, some of them printed off where it's black. It was white, and it was white here too. So it still had the car and the road trip, but there was no black in it. So whichever one you like, but I sent. The duplicates to these home with my son to give to my daughter-in-law I said she might like them she might not want to use them whatever but I sent them by him to give to her and because it makes me so excited that uh, she we can sit down me and her can sit down and talk about our budgets and you know compare the things and talk about money saving tips is very exciting and then while my youngest my oldest daughter was here for Christmas she was got excited after she saw the uh, Haley's uh, workbook. Um, I gave Haley a printable workbook for her and my son. And when she saw that, she was like, I want one of those. And and so she got excited. And um, so hopefully, you know, she'll be doing this journey also. And But those my goals this year is to save up for all these little things I've got here. I'll be doing a um, update on all of these probably once a month uh, and then my my 100, 100 envelope challenge I've already picked up our first three envelopes it's $194 that will go in here and when all these are pulled by the end of the year it will be $5,000 and then the uh, this one is $1,000 
that you save and I may make some adjustments to this because you know I might I might get to I might have a, a, a pay period that I have you know a good look good a good bit of extra money so I may pick the two highest ones on here and then save the lower ones for when I have less to put toward this you know just kind of but you can pick out which ones you want you don't have to do it by in order you don't have to do like I did pick a bottom one and a top one you don't have to do any of that pick out whichever numbers you want uh, you can let somebody pick for you your grandkids or your kids you can let them pick it out for you you know you just do it ever how you want to do it and um, I'm excited to get started in the new year I'm tired of 200 I'm tired of 2020 and it's wore me out and um, so you know I hope I've given you enough information and I will be doing some quilt videos when I get back from my trip I received an AccuQuilt uh, system for Christmas I usually ask Santa Claus to bring me something that will enhance what I already do my business and it is a cutting system that cuts out your pieces accurately and I call it a recipe book but it comes with a book and tells you which it's a die cut system and this this book teaches tells you you need die cut three four six eight ten twelve whatever to make this block and I'm gonna get into that after I get back from my trip gonna go and do some resting and some sightseeing and and that sort of thing get rejuvenated for this new season of quilt making a new season of my life I will be 57 years old this year this next year and um, so just want to get everything going so I've got my new sinking fun thing that I'm excited about uh, these were not very much I think I got two dozen of them they come in a dozen and a pack and they were not very much at all and I just I like these they are roomier they're bigger and they hold so like it's easier to get your money in and out of these so I really like that I have to find another job for my cigar box and then I have my wallet that I carry in my purse and I also have a jar of change that I'm gonna bring into the uh, videos when I do um, our cash stuff and all of that and our envelope our wallet unstuff and where we clean out all of our envelopes and clean out our change portion of our wallet and put all of that somewhere else so this is my uh, so I hope you start have a New Year's resolution to get your finances in order and know where you're spending your money be vigilant about where you're spending your money and I know I'm rambling on and on and on but I can't tell you how exciting it is to save money and to you know used to my husband would say did you pay the light bill now I can say I paid the light bill two weeks ago paid it when paid it you know uh, out. did you pay the water bill yes I pay the water bill pay the water bill a week and a half before it was due so makes you sleep a whole lot better at night and uh, so I'm gonna get all of my stuff together I've got a tote bag that I'm gonna put all of this in to keep it all together except for this goes back into my purse and I found this dime and I'm gonna stick it in my change part so that I'll have it when I get ready to take all of my change out and put it in my change jar but looking forward to 2021 and seeing how it goes seeing how everybody does and if you have like I said if you have any um, recipes you, a good crock pot recipes you can share with me instapot recipes you can share with me I would greatly appreciate it leave those in the comments if you have any questions leave it in the comments if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button and the next video will not be very long at all it doesn't take long after all the explaining is done after that, it's just the doing, and the doing doesn't take long at all. So thank you all so very much, and have a happy, happy,